Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, we got to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh. All right, and we do so in the name of His only begotten Son, whose name is Yahweh Shai, the one that the world calls Jesus Christ. All right. 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 You guys know by now that we're the Hebrew Israelites. All right, we come out every single week to tell people what's going to happen before it happens out of the Holy Bible. All right. So the the, the topic of the day is salvation. All right. You are my king. Somebody give me Exodus chapter 14. All right. Excuse me. Hey, now remember, our brother right here. Remember what he told us a minute ago? We ain't never. Oh, I don't think he's going to do it. I don't think he's going to do it. Remember that? Hey, so, uh, 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 hear me out. Hey, this is the word that patience. We're gonna have patience. I mean, I, all I, I think we're gonna see the devil. So let's save the devil. All right? We're gonna save the devil out of it. Now he's now he's scurrying along. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay. It's all right. We're built to last. You know what I'm saying? What's up? We're built so they can last. Right there. Bring that out. We're salvation. Uh, uh, Exodus 4:30. It's the book of that breath. It's the book of Exodus. Chapter 14, no, verse 30. Bring right. it out. Thus the Lord saved Israel right. that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. Right, so that's salvation, all right? Right here, we're in the right Exodus during the time of Moses. It said the Lord saved the Israelites out the hand of the Egyptians. Read that again. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. Right, so that's salvation. What's up, bro? Tell them what's good. Hey, bro, bro, hey, bro, come on, 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 come this is the moreno, no así. So you're, you're brown and he's white, but you're the same? That's, Hell no. That's crazy as hell. They get mad, man. What book did it give definition of anybody's body other than Jesus? Brown, I'm scared. I'm the only one with the definition of that book. You know what? You know what? The death knows son. Right. The only person you can see So as you can see, we're in Babylon. We see our people's minds are completely bugged out, all right? God. Even when they're not on drugs, man, they're, 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 they're drunk off a strong drink. That's why they believe that this guy right here is Jesus Christ, all right? But at the end of the day, we're going to get saved out of this captivity, all right? Our people are going to they're gonna, they're gonna get their mind back right, all right? They're going to walk up and down the street, strong guy off all types of uncontrollable ass drugs, all right? Or the uncontrollable drug of, of Christianity with the, uh, their PCP which is the poor child pastor, all right? Uh, it's the book of Numbers, chapter 10, verse 9. Bring it out. And if you go to war in your land against the enemy, the Lord's telling the Israelites, if you guys go to the war in the land against your enemy, all right, we know we're in the land of our enemies right now, go ahead. That oppresses you, right? And we're in the land of our enemies who oppresses us too, with the same thing back then, right? Go ahead. Then you shall blow an alarm right. with the trumpets, right. and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God. That's right. We'll be remembered by the Lord. Go ahead. And ye shall be saved from your enemies. We shall be saved from our enemies, all right? So that's the consistency of the Bible. Salvation is the Israelites being saved out of the hand of their enemy. God, out of the right. hand of the enemies that oppressed them, all right? There was the same story in the Old Testament, and it's going to be the same story in the New Testament when you're being consistent. Nothing should change, all right? Let me get the book of Deuteronomy, unless there's more on that. All right, let me get the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, the 33rd chapter, please. In the 29th verse. You know what I'm saying? Well, the Bible tells us to ignore the devil and he will flee from you, all right? Oh, the boy up there didn't know how to deal with it up there. He thought he was about to get beat up. But we already know. What's up, Bob? We already know. Just stand firm, stand the word. The devil's going to flee from us, all right? Deuteronomy 33. Done. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 29. 
Happy art thou, O Israel. The Bible said Israel is happy. It doesn't say every nation on the planet, even though the Lord created every nation on the planet. He said the nation of Israel, happy are we. Why? Go ahead. O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord. All right, the Bible said, who is like unto you guys, all right? Like the scripture said, what advantage does, uh, what advantage has the Jew, all right? We got finished that again, who is like unto you, go ahead. God, O people saved by the Lord. All right, so it said, O Israel, who's like unto you, O people saved by the Lord. That's what the Bible said, go ahead. The shield of thy help. Right? And who is the sword of thy excellency? Who is the sword of our excellency? That's the heavenly father and his son. All right, go ahead. And thine enemies shall be found liars. All our enemies are going to be found liars in that day. All right, God. Even the enemies of our own people are going to be found liars that day. Anybody that stood up against the truth of this Bible, the Bible said they're going to be found liars in that day. All right, matter of fact, read that again. God. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 29. Bring it out. Happy art thou, O Israel. The Bible said, happy is Israel. Why is Israel happy? Go ahead. Who is like unto thee? Who is like unto Israel, all right? The Lord made every nation on the planet. He's asking who's like unto the Israelites, right? Go ahead. O people saved by the Lord. What other nation is like us? We're the nation that's going to be saved by the Lord. That's, that's right. right. The salvation right. is not for every nation on the planet Earth, all right? But like I said, your guys' understanding of what salvation is is not what the Bible is saying salvation is, all right? Being saved is us being delivered from the hand of our enemy, all right? This book was written by Israelites to Israelites. You guys put your hands on it and try to include yourself into it without including yourself in the curses, which lets us know it has nothing to do with you, all right? Mm. Go ahead. The shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? Right, we know who the sword of our excell excellency is. We know who the shield of our help is, all right? Go ahead. And thine enemies shall be found liars right. unto thee. And all our enemies are going to be found liars. Everybody that held up this white boy Jesus is going to be found out to be a damn liar. So right. everybody yeah. have a problem with us saying that it was a lie is going to be found out a liar, all right? Period, point blank. You know what I'm saying? Let me get the book of uh, Joshua. No, no. Oh, yeah, go ahead. My bad. No. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. We're going to tread upon their high places. That sounds just like Ruth, the fourth chapter, all right? Wow. Shortly they shall see your salvation, and we shall tread upon his neck, all right? It's that same thing that was written in, uh, in uh, 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 Deuteronomy, it's locked, all right? So uh, Joshua 6 and 25. Why well, these guys are talking about 25. Yeah. Chapter 6, verse 25. Hold on, hold on. Hey, excuse me. You got any questions? Uh, I, I wanted to read up more on this. Uh, uh, you know, the shit happened in the 19th predict the future 100% of the time, you say that person has divine help, right? Uh, I, I, I don't think that it's a big thing. So, I think that's what we were doing. Okay. Let's just get out. At the same time, in the south, they're releasing the money. So, over here on the west, it's happening the same thing. Out of Texas, California, we're just reading that. Yeah, because the same person everywhere we go. So we're going to show you something real quick, then we're going to get into it, all right? And then I'm going to let you know, if you look on this sign, well, do you know, you might not believe in the Bible, but do you know anything about it at all? Yeah. Okay, so you know in the Bible, God it says God made all the nations on the earth, right? But he chose one nation to be his chosen nation of people, right? Which were the Israelites. Now, the world says that those people that are over there in the land of Israel, or these white Jewish people, are the Israelites. We're saying that the Israelites are the people that you see on this sign, all right? All 12 tribes are 12 different nations of people who actually go by a different national name right now, but really we're all one nation of people, all right? So the white man, you see, 
uh, right here, Negro, right? You see the word Jew, right? That's where you get the word Jew. So these white people, they act like the word Jew encompasses all 12 of these tribes. Even though there's 11 brothers, they don't say anything about the brothers. As you can see, Mexicans from the tribe of Issachar, we can prove it in the Bible. That's the reason we know is because it tells you what's going to happen before it happens. You got that scripture? God. Now I want to ask you something real, real quick, right? Read this real quick. It's the book of Leviticus. Chapter 17, verse 11. Now, this is Leviticus. This was written by Moses, all right? Think about how many thousands of years ago Moses wrote this, right? Go ahead. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, that don't really sound like nothing. That just sounds like a bunch of just gibberish, but it says the life of the flesh is in the blood, right? Now, remember when Moses wrote this, right? So, like you right now, if you woke up this morning and your skin, your flesh was blue, be honest, what, what, what are the first couple things you would do? I don't know, man. You probably go to the doctor, though, right? Yeah, probably Okay, so when you go to the doctor, what would they do to figure out what's wrong with your flesh? No clue. They, you don't think they take your blood? You don't think oh, yeah, they would, do, right. they would do all that. They would take your blood to figure out what's going on with your flesh, right? So wait a minute, Moses... Well, they would do more than that. I mean, they would that, do all, that, they would that, run all kinds they of They run a bunch of tests, but it would start with blood tests, right? No? Probably, maybe? I don't know. I mean... Well, well, the point is, right here, Moses said that the life of the flesh is in the blood thousands of years ago. They weren't taking blood tests then. Up until the 1800s, that's about when they started doing that. Now, us, we go to the doctor, it's normal to go get your blood taken. We think that's how it always works, but it doesn't, it didn't used to work like that. So how did Moses know that? Like, you go to the doctor, get your blood taken, it's gonna tell them what's wrong with your, what you, what's wrong with your lungs, what's wrong with your liver, if you got high blood pressure, if you got low blood pressure, right? How did Moses know that way back then when they weren't taking any type of, uh, any type of blood or anything like that, huh? Oh. That, that, that's just one thing. Now. As far okay, let's, let's, let me get this one. I love this one right here. This, this, this is my favorite one right here. Yeah. All right, so look, so in the book of Daniel, right, there was a time where our people, the people that you see right here, were slaves to Nebuchadnezzar. You, do, you, do you believe it? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Have you ever heard of uh, the Babylonian Empire with King Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah. Okay, there was a time when these people, the Israelites, were slaves to his, in his kingdom. Same reason, same way we're slaves in this kingdom right now, we're slaves in this kingdom. So uh, Nebuchadnezzar, who's a king, who actually lived, we can go and read about it and all that, right? He had a dream of this statue right here, right? This is Daniel the second chapter. So he was gonna kill all his men because he wanted them to tell him what was the interpretation of his dream. Now, of course, his men, they don't know what his dream was. So they're like, well, what was your dream? He said, no, I'm not gonna tell you what my dream was because then you'll just make up some answer. He was like, so the only way I'm gonna believe you that you can tell me what it means is if you tell me what dream that I had. Now, bro, I can't tell you what dream you had last night, so it sounds unbelievable, right? So an Israelite prophet named Daniel, he comes and says, okay, I see what you're gonna do. You're gonna kill the man. Well, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna pray to my God. He was an Israelite, our people, and he's gonna tell me the interpretation of your dream. So he goes, the Lord gives him the dream, shows him what it is, and then tells him what it means. Now, this is way back here, way back then, right? So Daniel tells you, look, this head of gold is talking about you. It's talking about your kingdom. It's gonna be the biggest kingdom. It's gonna be full of uh, uh, beauty. Nothing's gonna be more beautiful than you. That's why he's the head of gold. It says the chest of silver with the two arms of silver was talking about the Persians and the Medes. They're going to come and destroy your king. It has two arms because it represents the media and the Persians that were running at the exact same time. It said, but the, 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 the copper waistband is talking about Greece, Alexander the Great, which when the white man came into power. It said he is going to come and he's going to conquer these guys. When really, this is one kingdom. He shouldn't have been able to come and conquer these two kingdoms running at the same time. But Bible said that he would. It said after him, the Romans will come. Julius Caesar and all those guys, right? It said they will come. It said the Romans will be destroyed. But it said then the, uh, the last kingdom which will be politically divided, which is America right now and the, uh, and the European Union. Uh. Yeah. But this is the thing. All this sounds like mumbo jumbo until the very, very end, until we actually get to look back at his thing. So when we look back at everything he said, we see that in the earth, every single one of these things happened exactly the way he said that it happened. So the only thing that now we're dealing with is like, okay, how the hell did he do this? You know what I'm saying? Was this really written way back then? Or did somebody really get the Bible and just write everything into it? So we have to do a study. But this is unbelievable. How can he do this? And then the whole part of the story. So if this is true, then that means that the Lord really showed this man what his dream was. You know, something that you cannot do. And all of it sounds unbelievable until here we are right now to look back at what he said. And this is how we know the Bible is true. Because everything, in it, even from your people, why you guys go over here in this land, why they're doing what they did to you guys, is in the Holy Bible. Like, like most Hispanics, or, or Hispanics, right? They're speaking Spanish, right? That's not their native tongue. They got conquered by the white man, and got, that happened to everybody that's on this side. Oh, I know it. You want to know why? Because of what the Lord said in Deuteronomy 28 chapter. Because what God said was going to happen to our people. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 6 parts to start off. See, when you go to church, they talk about God loves everybody. They tell you that this guy right here, 
is Jesus Christ, when this does not coincide with how it's in the Bible. But they were able to pass that line around the whole world. So it makes sense why our people don't find no love or belonging in this Bible because it's not being taught to us the right way. And we see that this white man used this Bible to murder and slaughter and pillage all over the world. But it's just like a, it's just like a knife, right? A knife is used to cut food, the tool, right? But somebody can take it and go stab somebody with it, right? So this Bible, this white man used it for wickedness. Say that you ever seen that movie, uh, Book of Eli? No, I'm not. If you watch that movie, Den Denzel Washington is blind in the movie. And he has a Bible with him. It's the only Bible on the planet. But the white man 